because uh, the Finance Secretary, John Inside Swinney, just setting out the, the budget, the plan for 2014-15. Let's listen in. Two percent is higher than the UK equivalent at 49.8 percent. The Bank of Scotland PMI index for August indicated that private sector output has expanded for the 11th month and is rising at the fastest rate since the survey began. Scotland's recovery is not happening because of austerity, as the Chancellor claims. Recovery is taking place in spite of austerity. We cannot, we cannot presiding officer, however, take recovery for granted and must be focused on addressing real challenges in the economy. We will face these challenges from a position of strong financial management and responsibility. I have brought a balanced budget to Parliament each year since 2007, meeting our commitments and delivering value for money for the taxpayer. We continue to drive efficiency with the Scottish Futures Trust, helping deliver savings in our capital programme and public bodies expected to deliver annual efficiencies of 3%. In 2015-16, we will use our capital borrowing powers of up to £296 million to support our investment programme. We will apply the land and buildings transaction tax and the landfill tax, which I hope Parliament agrees this session. In 2014-15, I have made provision for the costs of the referendum on independence and the costs of implementing the Scotland Act 2012. Presiding officer, I will now set out for Parliament the actions we are taking to deliver economic recovery, reform our public services and support Scotland's people, businesses and communities. Our spending plans are focused on accelerating economic recovery through investment. To tackle Westminster's cuts to capital spending, we are switching funding from resource to capital, utilising capital receipts and pursuing revenue financed investment through the NPD programme and the regulatory asset based rail enhancements. We do so while committing no more than 5% of our future total Dell budget on the cost of our revenue-funded investment programme. I have published today an update on these projects and expected investment through this year, uh, through to 2022-23. In the short term, NPD investment is lower than originally forecast. This is for two reasons. Firstly, some NPD projects are being concluded at lower cost. Secondly... Secondly, Mr. some Dornan. projects are taking longer to be prepared and planned. The benefit, the benefit of taking time to properly prepare projects is clear from the example of the Queen's Ferry Crossing, which will be delivered on time and within a cost estimate that since 2011 has reduced by £145 million. Work continues on time and on budget on the £842 million new South Glasgow Hospitals project and major refurbishment programmes across the health service. The Schools for the Future programme will deliver 67 new schools across Scotland, 11 of which are already complete and operational. Construction is underway in Glasgow and Inverness colleges. Almost £2 billion worth of projects are in procurement and of these over £500 million of projects are expected to begin construction this financial year in the Ayrshire College, the M8, M73, M74 project bundle and a range of schools and community health projects. The effects of the recession are still being felt in the housing market and the Government is determined to do all that we can to help. We will support the construction industry and private house building through a range of schemes including the My New Home Mortgage Indemnity Scheme and through our £120 million Help to Buy Scotland scheme, providing access to affordable mortgages for home buyers. And we are on track to deliver 30,000 affordable homes by 2016, of which at least 20,000 will be for social rent. When the Parliament approved the Budget Bill in February this year, I set out plans to invest £859 million in affordable housing over the period 2012-13 to 2014-15. I intend to revise those provisions today. Over the three years to 2014-15, we now plan to invest not £859 million, but £970 million. And in 2015-16, we will invest a further £390 million. I can therefore confirm to Parliament that over the four-year period to 2015-16, this Government will drive investment in affordable housing of more than £1.35 billion pounds in total. 
presiding officer, together with the other elements of our programme, we will secure total investment of more than £8 billion in Scotland's infrastructure over the next two years. This budget takes action to boost employment, to create economic opportunities and enhance business confidence. Our plans are supported by the unique opportunities presented next year when Scotland will welcome visitors from around the world to the Commonwealth Games, the Ryder Cup and the second year of homecoming. We will invest £24 million in 2015-16 to establish a national performance centre to help us sustain the legacy of the Commonwealth Games. These effects will, will benefit Scottish business. We'll, we are taking significant steps to support private sector growth and ensure that we offer the most business-friendly environment in the UK. All of our communities benefit from the Small Business Bonus Scheme and the most generous set of business rates relief in the UK, worth over £560 million each year. Our enterprise bodies will support business growth, including through the Scottish Investment Bank and the SME Growth Fund, and we will resource innovative measures to encourage a new age of entrepreneurship across Scotland. Digital technologies offer huge potential to improve productivity and to open up new markets. The budget confirms a range of investment in digital technologies, including more than £280 million in two major contracts with BT to ensure 95% of premises in Scotland have access to superfast broadband by the end of 2017-18, exceeding our earlier target. The transition to a low-carbon economy is a key theme of our economic strategy. We will provide £200 million over the next two years for schemes such as the National Renewables Infrastructure Fund, amongst others. And given the impact on investment of uncertainty over the UK energy policy, I will extend the Renewable Energy Investment Fund by a further year to 2015-16. In launching the second report on proposals and policies in June, the Minister for the Environment told Parliament that we would use the budget to boost investment in meeting our world-leading climate change targets. The budget confirms we will maintain the Sustainable Action Fund for the next two years, invest an additional £15 million in peatland restoration, deliver over £50 million investment in the Warm, Home Fund, Warm Homes Fund a full year ahead of previous plans, enabling faster progress in delivering greater energy efficiency, and work with the private sector to secure around £200 million of measures to tackle fuel poverty. The budget also confirms that we will deliver around £40 million of investment in sustainable transport through the Future Transport Fund over the next two years. We will increase funding to support active travel. This will see an additional £20 million invested in cycling compared to the last budget. And in total, our support for active travel over the next two years compared to the last two will rise from around £40 million to around £60 million. A focus on education and training is fundamental to our efforts to support the economy and create the conditions for growth. We will extend funding for the 25,000 modern apprenticeships per year into 2015-16. We will continue to fund opportunities for all, guaranteeing support for all of Scotland's 16 to 19 year olds, not currently in education, employment or training. Free higher education will continue for Scottish students as part of annual investment of more than £1 billion in the sector. And this budget secures the position of our colleges for the remainder of this Parliament. In February, I confirmed to Parliament that we would provide resource funding of £522 million for colleges in 2013-14 and maintain that level in 2014-15. This budget delivers on that commitment, however it also goes further. I confirmed today that the college's resource budget will increase to £526 million in 2015-16, supporting full-time courses and equipping, equipping Scotland's students for the world of work. We will, we will also act to remove barriers to the labour market, particularly for women. We will invest over £190 million in the next two years to fund the Children and Young People Bill. This will provide an additional 125 hours of early learning and childcare for all three and four year olds and looked after two year olds, worth around £700 to a family. Real practical help is being offered to hard pressed families making their way in the world. Presiding officer, our support for households is an integral part of our support for the economy. It is an approach that is in line with the values of the people of Scotland and demonstrates the priority that we attach to helping the most vulnerable. Despite the financial pressures that we face, 
I can give a clear and unequivocal commitment that NHS prescriptions, eye tests and personal care will remain free, the concessionary bus travel scheme will be maintained, the education maintenance allowance and from 2014-15 a minimum income for so students will be So we will leave available. John Swinney, and Scotland's uh, finance secretary there, on, setting out his the plans for the next two financial years and bringing our Scotland pay. correspondent Laura Bicker who has been listening to that and Laura, uh, a significant moment, some pressure there to address a number of issues and also of course a referendum on the horizon. Well, this is, has been billed the budget for independence. As John Swinney, the finance secretary, got to his feet there, this is his platform to show that this is a credible Scottish government that can deliver on its promises. And the hope, really, for them is that people in Scotland can see what they're trying to do and put that cross in the yes, yes box in the referendum next year. Now, one of the key things that he's trying to get across there is that despite the cuts from Westminster, this government is trying to do its best. He pointed out a real term cut of 10% in the budget that they've had from Westminster. But he said that the Scottish economy is still managing to grow. He pointed to unemployment levels in Scotland, which at the moment sit at 7.4% compared to the UK average, which is 7.7%. He also uh, talked about Scotland's economy. Is uh, He said the recovery is happening despite the austerity cuts from Westminster. Westminster, um, and he said that uh, he would work to mitigate those cuts. Now, one of the key things that we're waiting to hear from John Swinney is what he will do to mitigate the effects of the spare room subsidy. Now, this is something that uh, certain, certainly here in Scotland will affect 88,500 people. And we are expected to hear later in that speech that he will do something to mitigate those effects. But one of the key things he had up his sleeve there was a saving from the Queen's Ferry Crossing. Now, this is the new bridge across the fourth, and he says they've managed to save £125 million on that project. And he says this points to a government that is uh, focused on infrastructure and can deliver on projects of this scale. Well, other key things that he mentioned in his speech there were a, a legacy, actually, for the Commonwealth Games. He said there would be a, 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 a national performance centre which would be built uh, with some of the money that he has as a legacy after next year's Commonwealth Games. And he also said that there will still continue to be free higher education in Scotland. And also he mentioned more money for colleges, which will keep the Liberal Democrats happy. That's something they've been calling for. That budget was standing at 522 million. There will be an increase of 4 million in the forthcoming year. And he said that this is a government that will give real and practical help to young families. Uh, 190 million pounds will go on our children and young people um, bill, which will help give free care for uh, children who looked after children uh, as their parents go to work. Laura, thank you. Laura Bicker there.